Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to learn how to use color range and luminosity masks to target specific colors and tones within our images. So let's jump into On One Photo Raw and let's get started. So now I'm inside of On One Photo Raw, and to start the video, we're going to show off color range masks first. So I'm inside of the edit module, and I have this photograph here. Now with this photograph, we're going to use a color range mask to target these blues within our sky here. Now color range masks are basically masks that allow you to target specific colors in your shot and apply adjustments to them. So if I have a specific color in my photograph that I want to modify, I can use color range masks to do that. To create a color range mask, I'm going to head into my effects tab, I'm going to add a filter, and I'm going to add the curves filter. Now the curves filter doesn't do anything to my shot until I modify it. So before we modify this tone curve, let's create a color range mask. To create a color range mask, we first need to access our masking options here. This rectangle with the circle inside of it. Now we have all of the masking options for this curves filter. To enable a color range mask, just head down to this color range area. We can just tap this to enable it. And the default color is sort of this pink coral color here. Now you can choose a specific color by just selecting this box. And now you can access all of the different colors. But I would recommend using this color dropper tool instead. This color dropper tool allows you to pick specific colors within your image just by clicking on them. So I'll just grab this color dropper tool here, and then I'll just head over to this blue area in my sky. So now let's head over to our masking options, and I'm gonna select view. That's going to allow me to view my mask here. Now remember in masking that white reveals and black conceals. So in my mask here, I can see that all of this white area is where there's blues within my photograph. So I can see the majority of the blues are in this top area of my photograph, but there are some blues below in this sandy area here as well. Now to modify your color range, you can use this color range slider here. The color range slider will allow me to modify how many of those color tones are adjusted by the mask. So if I don't want that many color tones within the mask, I can just lower this color range slider. And now it's targeting the really strong blue tones within my image. I'm just gonna add in maybe a little bit more just until I can see a little bit on the sand dunes. So now I'll head back over and I'll choose view so I can view my photograph. And now watch as I modify this tone curve. I'm just going to drop a point in my midtones here, and I'm going to pull up and down. See how this tone curve is only modifying the blue tones within the sky? And if I head up and I turn this tone curve off and on, it's only targeting those specific tones within the sky that we chose with our color range mask. So now that I've darkened the sky area a little bit, I'm going to head over and I'm going to copy this mask that I created. I'm going to add another filter. I'll add the curves filter. I'll head into the masking options for the curves filter. I'm just going to paste this mask real quick. And now if I view this, it's the same mask that we created earlier with those blue tones. But I want this applied to the foreground rather than the background. So I'm just going to head over and select invert. Now that white area is applied to my foreground and not the background. So then I'll head over and I'll choose view. And then in my tone curve, I'm just going to create a simple S curve to bring in some cinematic mood into these sand dunes. So I'll just drop a point in my shadows. I'll lower it a little bit. Then I'll drop a point up in my midtone highlight area and then I'll just drag that up a bit. And now if I turn off and on this tone curve here, 
you can see that the adjustment is only applied to this foreground area and it's not modifying those blue tones in our sky. So now I'm going to head into my effects tab here and I'm just going to lower the opacity all the way of all of these filters and then I'm just going to raise this incrementally until I get the look that I want. Probably right about there. So now if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, we've brought a lot of life into this photograph by just using two simple filters and a color range mask. So now that we've gone over a color range mask, let's go over a couple examples of a luminosity mask. Now a luminosity mask is basically the same thing as a color range mask, except for rather than targeting colors within your photograph, you're now targeting specific tones within your image, such as shadow tones, midtones, and your highlights. So basically a luminosity mask allows you to target specific tonalities in your image and apply adjustments to them. Now with this photograph, we're going to target this sky area, which is obviously brighter than our foreground. To do that, we're going to use a local adjustment. So I'm inside of the edit module and I'm inside of my local adjustment tab here. Now with this new local adjustment layer, I'm going to head into the masking options and then I'm going to choose lumen. That's going to apply a luminosity mask for me. Now if I view my mask here, Remember that white reveals and black conceals. So we can see that this top area of sky is where the majority of the white is going for the mask. And these darker areas on the bottom aren't getting much of that white applied to them. Now with the luminosity mask, we can pinpoint specific tones by using our level slider here. Now the level slider has three different points to it. We have our shadow point, our midtones, and then our highlights. If we want to remove a tone from the shot, all we have to do is pull that point to the right. If we want to add in that tone to our mask, just pull that point to the left. So if I want to remove shadow tones from my mask, I can just pull my shadow point to the right, and you can see it's removing those white areas on my mask from those shadow tones. So if I pull my midtones to the right, it's removing midtones from my mask. If I pull my highlights to the left, it's adding in highlights to the mask. So if I pull to the right, it removes. If I pull to the left, it adds them into the image. So I'm just going to pull those shadow tones to the left a little bit to bring a little bit of them back in. Then I'll pull in a little bit of my midtones. I'll remove some shadow tones and just kind of play with my masking right now. And then I'll add in some highlights maybe like that. Maybe I'll remove some mid-tones, add in some highlights. Just like that. I think that looks pretty good. And one thing we can do with this mask is we can actually brush away areas that we don't want as well. So if I don't like these lines in my foreground, I can just use my masking brush, make sure I'm set to paint out. And then I can just brush away any of these areas that I don't want within my shot. Just like that. So now we have this mask strictly applied to the top area of our image. And if I go over and I view my shot, I'm just going to reset my exposure here, but I can play with these tonality sliders and it's strictly applied to that top area where we have that mask applied. So I'm just modifying a few of these tonality sliders in here to give it a little bit more of a moody feel. And then I'm going to head to my exposure a little bit and maybe make it a little less bright, and then we'll add a little more white to combat the darkness, like that. There we go, that's looking a little bit more moody. And then we'll add in a little bit more mid-tone to it, and then I'll pull back on my shadows again, just like that. So then I'll head down to my color, and I'm going to grab my temperature slider, 
and I'm just going to pull that to the right a hair. And that's just going to add in a little bit of warmth to the sky area and make it not look so cool and so boring. So now if I turn off this local adjustment here, because we're targeting just this sky area with the luminosity mask, we're not applying any of this local adjustment to our foreground. So now let's go over one last example of a luminosity mask. And in this example, we're actually going to be inverting the mask so that we're bringing out the tones within our shadows rather than the brighter areas within the image. So I'm going to go to my local adjustments tab again. And in this local adjustment, I'm going to go into my masking options and I'm going to choose lumen. Now, if I view this, the luminosity mask is applying that white to the brighter areas within my shot. But I want this applied to our foreground area so that I can bring out these shadowy tones in here. So we're just going to head over and choose invert. So now that I've inverted this image, when I go to modify my level slider, it's going to be the exact opposite. If I want to remove a specific tone in my shot, I'm going to have to pull it left now. If I want to add in a specific tone, I'm going to have to pull it right. So whenever you invert a luminosity mask, the level slider gets flipped and you have to modify things a little bit differently. So for this photograph, I want to add in a little bit of shadowy tones to my mask. So I'm going to grab my shadow tone point, I'm going to pull it to the right, and that's going to incorporate more shadow tones into the mask. You can see it's applying more white into those shadow tones. And then I'm going to grab my midtone point and I'm actually going to remove some of them from the image. Just like that. Then I'll grab my highlights and I'll do the same. And then we can just keep playing with the level slider until we cover up our foreground with white and our sky area is completely black. So I'm just going to modify this shadow point again. I'll pull it to the right to incorporate more shadow tones. Just like that. I'll pull my midtones to the right a little bit. And then maybe I could pull my highlights to the right as well. That looks pretty good just like that. So now I'll view my adjustment here on my photograph. And our exposure is set to negative one already. So I'm just going to double click that to reset it. And now since we have the white applied strictly to our foreground area using that luminosity mask, I'm going to head down to my tone slider and watch as I pull up on my shadow tones. You can see it's not modifying any of the tonalities within the sky. It's strictly pulling out all of those shadow tones and detail in all of those areas that we covered in white with that luminosity mask. So I'll just pull up on my shadows a little bit. I'll add in some contrast. Then I'll pull up on my whites just a hair. And now if I turn off this adjustment, it does a lot to bring out that foreground area, but it doesn't apply any of that adjustment to our sky area. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned about luminosity and color range masks. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our channel to stay updated whenever we drop new content. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.